hello you guys and we are back with another video in today's video i'm just gonna do like maybe a cute and simple little christmas design on my ready going to practice hand and i'm going to be most likely searching on my phone to see like some cute christmas designs we can look at so let's see okay Y'all, I love these nails right here. They are so pretty. Let me show you guys. This is how I'm probably going to be doing my nails right here. Because I think it is so cute. And let me just get that out of the way. This is how I want to do my nails. Because I think that it's so pretty and so classy. I do have like full nails. I may make them just a tad bit longer to get in the round circle. But other than that, those are so pretty, y'all. And those are so gorgeous too. I love the natural look. I just love a nice sleek look. Like this is cute, but I'm more of a simple person. Now, like I said, I, well, I didn't say this, but I will do all type of fancy nails like this or anything like that on people, but I just couldn't find myself wearing it on my on me so you know it just goes on but anyways let's try to figure out some christmas designs let's see blue christmas nails blue christmas nails so i'm thinking more of like a glittery design for like ombre i love ombre and i am going to go into kind of like telling you guys how you can do a cute ombre set but anyways i love doing stuff like this you know with glitter i love anything with glitter um let's see these are cute too maybe i can do a little something like this i'm going to yeah this did give me an idea so i'm going to work with that i really like that so okay so i really do like that look so let's just go along with doing something like that hopefully i do have a blue chrome color but anyways i'm gonna go ahead and swatch with you guys some of the colors that i have i do have this which is from nail supply glamour and it is a acrylic like a glitter acrylic so let's swatch this and see what we have because i do also want to use my tickled pink colors I have March and I have Fairy Godmother. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna swatch this one from Nail Supply Glamour. I'm gonna use my Tickled Pink Nail Liquid and I'm gonna be using my very amazing number 12 um, Alpha Brush, you guys. I have to revamp this and I need some ideas on how to revamp it but or what to do because I know I'm going to need a lot of glue but I'm going to have to go in and recolor it and everything and I want it to be really cute but anyways we're going to go ahead and take our liquid and do some swatches and I love this cute little bottle because whenever I'm doing my videos I can just take this small bottle out and just pour it in there and refill it whenever I need to so I'm going to put that here so this is one of the nail supply glamour colors they do have a whole bunch of glitter colors that you can choose from they have so many that i couldn't even choose them all and they do have they did well they do have very good prices so but anyways let's go ahead and see look at that what this looks like on a nail and a lot of times when you're using colors like this, you might want to kind of like shake up, up the um, acrylic powder before you use it. So that way all of the clear acrylic can come to where you need it to be. Now the tickled pink color, which is this one, which is called March. This one is kind of like this too. But I feel like this one is more on the green purple side instead of like all the way blue. So let's see. And then we're going to go in with the other swatch 
from Tickled Pinks. And like I said, I want to do like a Christmas design. So this is the color that we have right there. And it is very pretty. It is very pretty. And then, and once again, this is the Nail Supply Glamour acrylic color. So I'm going to put this here. And we're going to get the swatch of... The tickled pink color okay and this is March so as you can see it is a bit different it's not the same so let's hold it up it's definitely a little bit different so let's do a quick swatch and we're gonna go ahead and get into the video of doing the nails See how that looks versus this color? This is more on the bluer side. That is pretty already. That's really cute. So let's go ahead and get the rest of it. And there we go. And that is the other color. That is really cute. So we're basically probably going to be doing one or two of the colors. And for the design, I am most likely going to use this one because it's more on the blue side for Christmas. So let's go ahead and get into doing the nails. So here I am using my ready going to practice hand and the thing that i already i've already applied the nails and i've already applied the um nail tips and everything and i've kind of i've cut them down and i've kind of shaped them a little bit as you can see so one of the things that i like to do whenever i'm actually doing it on a live person is once i have the tips applied i would blend it in and then before i would start the process i would make sure that i have like a little edge on the nail and everything but when i'm doing it on my practice hand i don't go into trying to do the etching and everything like that but one of the tips that i can show you is whenever i'm on my practice hand i use a um, a file that has a middle side to it because whenever I'm filing on the side of my nail I don't have to worry about this part cutting the silicone because this silicone with the really going hands are very very tender and they're easy to cut so once I'm on the side like this and I'm filing I can look over here and I have the metal side on the side and all it is is doing is rubbing against the nail this side will not cut because it's not sharp on the edge and I do kind of lean the file piece which is this top part a little bit away from the edge so that way whenever it is going across the nail it's not part of this rough file cutting it so that's how I use these for my silicone practice hand okay so back to when applying the acrylic on your nails once I have prepped the natural nail and I've applied the tips, I will always go in. And if you see this line here, if you feel across it, it's a roughness. You can feel where the tip and the other nails meet. So what I would do, I would uh, take my drill, I would take my e-file, which is the correct term, and I would just go across. And I do apologize for the shaking, but I would just go across that nail and make sure that those edges are clear of all the bumps and lumps and things like that. And it goes the same for every single nail. Most of the time, it's the edges on the side that needs to be buffed down. And you can always, the, the number one thing when doing nails is touch. If you can feel those bumps and lumps, even when you've applied your acrylic and you feel those lumps, you know that you need to apply more acrylic on the area. So that is another tip that I can give you. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and apply. And as I'm applying, if I do have any other tips to tell you when it comes to applying the acrylic to help your application a little bit better, I will definitely go into it. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to finish getting all these rough edges off of the nail tips. Okay, so another thing is when I'm feeling across those edges, I can file that a little bit more, but like I said, this is a practice hand, it really doesn't matter. What you want to do is feel across that edge, and if you're, what you want to do, y'all, I mean, my words just be, ugh, but what you want to do is feel your finger across that edge, and if your skin begins to snag or feel like it's going to get caught, then you know you need to file just a little bit more. Now, on your point of view, you may be using your file, and if you'll do the same exact thing. Now, on this nail, I can feel my nail catching, but that's not going to be a problem, because like I said, this is a practice hand. So, like I said, Going on into the next step, whenever I have gotten done with the edging, it's time to now prime and prep, okay? And after you've primed and prepped, you're going to go into starting to apply the acrylic. Once, um, now one thing I love to do is to even smooth this out even more. I love to go in with my clear and just put a little bit more of a hump in that stress area. Because this is a stress area right in between here. And I'm also not only just putting more of an apex or helping the apex to build, but I'm also closing that. And it doesn't need to be thick, you guys. It just needs to be flat. 
I'm covering that natural nail with clear acrylic because I don't want my other acrylic to stain it. It does kind of bother me whenever I'm sitting here trying to apply acrylic to the natural nail because it, you really should just have clear there. That way, whenever you go for the fill-ins, it's easier for you to follow away all the color acrylic and you'll know when to stop because you've reached the clear acrylic. So you just lay that on there just like that and you do it for all 10 nails. And I will mention this, this video is just to give tips. This is not the full process of doing nails. If I were to actually tell you guys the full process of doing nails, I would literally have a human hand so I can actually lead you guys the correct and right way. There are a lot of things that people overdo, and especially when it comes to like how you dip in your powder. Now there are some wrong ways to dip, but there are many right ways to dip. It's not just the wrong way. Like some people say, don't drag your powders, but you know, and some people say to drag them. And so it's really about what you like to do as a nail tech. You have to find what's best for you. As long as it's right, as long as your client's nails are in good shape or healthy, you're not hurting your clients. That is the main thing you want to focus on whenever you're trying to, you know, do someone's nails. It's not all about the. It's good to know a good technique, and like I said, with everybody's technique, is going to be different. There may be something that I'm doing that you may not do that might be so much better for you it might be easier for you whatever is easy for me is not going to always be easy for you so that is something you have to remember just because it's different from the way that you do it doesn't mean that it's the wrong way to do it okay so i just went in with tickles pink ice queen this is the clear acrylic for them and i have went in and built my base up so let's just say this was a real client if they came in and they wanted to fill in i can drill all of the, the um, acrylic away and when i get to this clear base i know that i've gotten down to where i need to be and it'll be so much easier to remove the acrylic that's on top so the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to show you guys how to do a glitter nail now i may not do a whole set of um of nails today because i'm kind of like in teaching mode but i am just going to give you guys a few tips like i've mentioned so don't think this is the complete and the correct process of how to do it because this is not the complete process it's only just a few tips now this is fairy godmother that's not the one i wanted to use today the one i'm going to be using is march and it is a like a chunky glitter from tickle pink and i'm going to show you something that makes it easier for me now one thing you can do is wet the nails so that way maybe it'll stick a little bit better because sometimes glitter do want to stay on your brush one thing that will help with using glitters is to shake your glitters so that way the acrylics can mix and the glitters can mix with the clear now what i'm doing here is i'm applying my acrylic in the way, in the manner, and where I wanted to go. And I'm shaping it to the shape of the tip. That is something that will really help with shaping the nail. So I'm also going to get some more of this, and I'm going to put it here. If you place the acrylic on the nail wide, it will become a wide nail, a wide nail that you have to do excess, um, excess filing on which you really don't have to do that so what i mean if you have excess glitter on the sides it's going to be kind of aggravating it's going to be wide y'all you're going to wonder why the world isn't your shape staying where it needs to be it's because you just have a lot of glitter that you haven't swiped on the sides to the, to the nail tip now this is the part about doing glitter umbrays this is going to be a glitter umbra nail so now that i have my glitter down in the way that i want what i do i love to make sure that this area is wet and i love to go in with my ice cream with my clear acrylic and i love to go on top of that glitter to make a solid foundation glitter is chunky especially chunky glitters so what i'm going to do i'm going to go here and just slide that on, on down in the, down the glitter. Yeah, I'm gonna do it just like that. Because overall, at the end, you're gonna have to cap it. But the reason for this is because we want our ombre to be really nice and nice and blended. So I'm gonna bring you guys in a little bit. I'm gonna put you guys up. I'm gonna put you guys back on me, okay? So what we want our ombre to do is be nice and blended. So that way, we have the clear on top and it's, and it's a nice, smooth area. It's not chunky. Because if it's chunky, whenever you try to blend in the other color, it is gonna go all between the glitter pieces and that's not what you want. So I am using, I'm gonna show you which one I'm using. I believe this is Tutu. This is the color that I'm going to be using for the ombre, so you guys want to see that. So let's see what color I'm using before I flip this over. This is Tutu from Tickle Pink, and this is one of their cover powders. So what I'm going to do, I like to wet that clear just a little bit because it helps it to blend. And I'm going to go in with Tutu. I don't want it runny, but I want to go in and pull it down just a little bit. And I want it to, I want it to run into this glitter. And you can see how smooth it runs into the glitter. I got to keep putting pieces there, putting balls. Y'all, I got to get my words together. Y'all get what I'm saying. Y'all see what I'm doing. But I'm just giving you some tips that helps me. And if you catch on to it, you catch on to it. I will make a better video. Like explaining this so much better than what I did today. Because <laughs> I'm just trying to do my best here. And as you can see, it is going to be a very pretty ombre. And you just flatten it side to side. And y'all look at that pretty little ombre. And some people do like their ombre to be down just a little bit more. So what you'll do is just get some of it and you'll post, I mean, not post, but you'll put it right there. Push it up a little and bring it down. And y'all can see that it looked a little fat, but we're going to fix all that fatness with some clear acrylic powder. You just got to make sure this ombre is as far down as you want it to be, which I like mine to be a little bit farther down. I don't want any glitter really showing out through. Okay, there we go. 
Okay. And then we're going to go ahead, go in with the clear. We're going to put the clear right here. It's hard for me to do this because it's so much better for you to do this when, you're, when the hands are in a downward position. And the way that I have the stand for this hand causes it to just be flat. And it really needs to be in a downward position whenever you're applying acrylic and you want it to just flow freely in the, in the area that you want it to flow in. So we're going to get another bead of clear. And we're going to push it on down like that. And of course, you can pull it up just so you can get, get it where you need it to go. Now, there's so many ways. If you can see it filling out, you see where we're going with this. And you got to know where everything's supposed to go in order to get it. You can just by looking at the nail, you'll see where it looks deformed. You'll see where the acrylic balls need to go in order to make that nail where you need it to be. So that way, when you're filing, you don't have to file as much. So if you see how I did that, now you can see it's kind of, it's kind of wopsided because like I said, this is a hand and the way that the hand sits has a lot to do with how your beads fall. So now I'm going to show you an example of how easy it would be if this hand was in a downward position. So I'm going to take this out and I'm just going to hold this hand myself. So this is basically the position you want the hand to be in is in a downward position whenever you're trying to do the set nails. You want it to be downward so the acrylic can fall. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a, let's see, make sure it's pushed in real good. This is in a downward position. And I am going to do a, let's see, a reverse, I would say a reverse ombre, but that's not really what I'm, what I'm trying to do right now. It's basically going to be me putting the pink first and then the, the glitter on top. So watch this. And this also helps with cuticles, like with the cuticle, with the cuticle bead. You see how it's not running to the sides and you also get a chance to make it flush to the cuticle area. And you see how it didn't run to the sides like whenever I was doing the other nail and it was just so much easier to maneuver it. You see how that was real flush? I mean, not flush, but y'all, you see how that was super easy to get up in there. And if you look close, I have it real flush to the cuticle area versus here. It's a little bit lumpy and you can, it, it definitely slid, but what I'm saying, the, the position of your hand has a lot to do with how easy or how difficult your application could be. So look at that. Y'all see how easy that is? It's so much easier. And the thing to do is work smarter, not harder. Look how flush, y'all. Look how flush that is versus this one being flat. Like, you can tell that I was able to work that bead where it needed to go. And now for this, now that you have as much as what you need, you may want to add a little bit more of that acrylic to this area and bring it down a little bit more. And that would have been pretty just for her. And you bring it on down. You bring it on down. And now... You're gonna take the glitter, you're gonna take the glitter acrylic, and you're gonna brush this upward. Cause it's like a reverse, I would say a reverse ombre. So you're gonna bring that here. So, and the thing is you don't want the glitter to go up, up too far because you want the reverse effect. And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna add a little bit more here. And you guys can see the total difference on how it took. And we're gonna brush it up just a little bit to make the reverse. Y'all see that? Y'all see how that came out? That is so cute. So now I'm going to go ahead and take this. Let's see, is that how far up I want it to be? And there we go. And we're going to take our clear. I'm going to cap it. In situations like this, you want to, want to cap it. I'm definitely going to do another video on this in more detail because I don't feel like I explained this too well, which I can explain this much better than that. But, and you always want to keep that cuticle flush. So the thing is about getting a flush bead is you want to have a good, good brush that can get in those crevices, that can get in the corner of that cuticle area. And that will help you so much with the process of making sure that your cuticle area is flush. Because one, one thing that really helps a flush cuticle area, I mean, one thing that a flushed cuticle area does is whenever your nail grows out, you do not have to worry about having that big clump. So if this one grew out like that, you can see the difference. Look how nice and elegant that one looks versus look how this one looks big and clunky. And look at that. It just looks, it's just big like you... And here it is flush to the cuticle. So I'm definitely going to have to get me a handstand that holds the hand this way. So that way, because you can see how nice the shape looks. And all I would have to do is let this dry. I'm going to let this part right here dry. And then I'm going to show you guys. And you guys see that little dent right there? Those are areas that you want to fill in. Because you don't want to dent. Or you can just make it better whenever you file that nail down. Or smooth it out. But anyways, you guys, do it this way. I'm going to fill this area. Hold on. Fill the area in. Okay, and there we go. And there we go. So I'm gonna put this up here so it can sit real quick. I don't want it touching the table. But anyways, I'm gonna let me just put this back on the on its stand, and you guys can kind of see where everything goes with that. 
Okay, give me just one second, you guys. And then you clean off your brush. One of the ways you can clean off your brush is by taking your monomer, going in like that, and making sure everything is out of it. This type of brush is a very good brush to have. Sadly, the website is going down that, that sold these brushes. I've had this brush ever since I've done nails. This has been the only brush I've used, really, to do nails with because it is a good brush. This is what a real Kalinsky brush looks like. I have so many different types of Kalinsky brushes. And to me, I honestly feel like this is the only company that actually has a real Kalinsky brush because, like, look at the difference. Look at how this brush is so nice and smooth. So when I put this one in here, I think I'm a little the same, but this one is, you can tell that the quality is different because look how this one, let me see, can I get it a little bit closer for you guys? The quality is totally different. You can tell that this one looks like actual hair and this one is super shiny. The, the bristles are not the same. But anyway, those are just a few little tips. I am going to do an actual full set for you guys so that you guys can watch it. Um, I'm going to definitely get into my teaching mode very, very soon. So that way you guys can see how to actually do some nails. But I am going to zoom out and get done with the set. Okay, so I don't want this video to be too long because I do have like some other little things that I want to finish in this video. But I am going to, and that's the thing, like, let me see, get all this off. I got a lot of little videos to put out here, y'all, for y'all, because I have a lot to say. A lot to show you guys, a lot to explain you guys, a lot to help you guys with. So, anyways, I am going to go ahead and attempt to finish doing these nails. So, I'm going to go in with the Tickle Pinks Tutu, okay? So, y'all probably just going to be watching me apply this acrylic to the hands for right now. I'm going to bend those back and try to... I might have to just take this off. Uh-oh. I might have to just take this off. I really do feel like they should make another thing for this. Unless I put this... Oh, let me show you guys. Hold on. Let me show you guys. Move you up. Okay. So when it comes to this hand, it's really hard to kind of work on this hand because of the fact it is laying straight. When I feel like they need to make a um, uh, they need to make one of these that actually bends somewhere in the middle. So that way, when we let it up, let's see, you gotta do like this. When you let it up like this, one of the pieces come down, so that way we can bend the hand downward like this. Because whenever we're trying to, uh, whenever we're trying to do a client's hand, we do have their hands in a downward position, which will a lot. So it's supposed to be downward like this. It's not supposed to be flat like that. But anyways, watch me as I continue this journey. I'll finish the set.
because I'm gonna have a clean brush every time. Okay, so, so now that we've gotten this part of the nails done, you guys, I'm gonna go in and start dancing. Yeah. I already cleaned it up, so I'm gonna go back. Okay. Alrighty, so like I said, I use a I use a, one of these type of files that are metal, and I will go in. I'm not gonna go in on this one yet because it's the one I just got through doing. Y'all look at that shape; it's cute. But as you see, there's acrylic here, and you can pull back that part and just file it off. You can see how that shape is coming out in there. Okay, you guys, I have completely finished um, filing and buffing the nails, and now we're going to go on with doing a design on this finger. So, what so, I'm going to go ahead and do is get some white gel polish. So, I'm going to be using 58, which is white, and I am going to be doing a design on the index finger. So, I'm going to do my little dabs of white in here. Make sure that it is mixed in because we want these to be real cute. And I'm gonna get my dotting. Okay, tape. you guys. So I did put my little white in here, and I am going to. Now I don't usually use monomer to wet my brush. You're really supposed to use like alcohol, and some people use um. Some people use acetone but i like to use alcohol because acetone it just kind of breaks through the um gel polishes um, i don't really like that so i like to just go in with alcohol like maybe 99 percent alcohol or something like that so i have my dotting tool this is what i'm going to use
little crystals because I do have like a whole bunch of cute little crystals. Like I can literally put some of those on there because those will match or something like that on there. That's cute too. Gonna be cute for Christmas. It's a cute little Christmas design. Um, freestyle look. I'm trying to figure out what should I do for that look. Um, this is pretty. I like that. Okay, I'm putting on the nail. Let's do a little design with those. Let's definitely do a design with those. And I never, I never use these, so maybe I can do a design with these. That'll be cute. I don't know. I think I'm gonna try to do something with these too. I think that's something I should do. Yeah, I'm gonna try to do something with these, you guys. These are cute. So let's. Do so I'm gonna be going in with my nail supplies, super diamond gel glue. And I don't know if I should go in with this because I believe that's self leveling. I don't know. Let's see. And I'm gonna put it probably on this finger and I'm gonna put something on that finger. So let's just go ahead and see how this is going to work. I'm gonna go in with these. So I had it my tweezers because, like I said, I've never used these before. So I'm going to put a whole bunch right here. So I'm going to take. Ooh, okay, I don't know how to. <laughs> Y'all. Let's just maybe drop it in there. Uh -oh. And these are supposedly to be. Y'all, that's just big. And that's exactly what I'm trying to get rid of because they're so big. And ain't nobody going to really use these, I don't think. Mm. It's staying where it needs to be at the moment, so that's good. It's staying where it needs to be. And then I'm going to go in with like a, bit, like a smaller one. Let's see. Okay, and so we're going to put this one here. I don't know. That looks kind of tacky to me. Just having these up there like that. But then we're going to need another one. I'm going to put one right here in the middle. Uh oh. Okay. And there we go. We've got them all three where they need to be. So if we look, we might can fit some other limestones in there. Like maybe on the sides here. I'm going to bring this down. And I am going to put some of these in there, like on there on the side, something like this. And I feel like this is the, the part where it gets super messy because you have all your stuff out on the table. And it just gets messy. So maybe, let's see. Uh-oh. Y'all, I didn't know it slid. Uh-oh. And I'm going to put something here. Do y'all see that? Okay. Didn't know it slid, but you definitely want them to be in the pyramid position. And it's going to look a hot mess, but we're just going to work with it today. Because you want to have, I don't know, like, some type of design on there. Y'all, this going to be so ugly. <laughs> this going to be so ugly. Let's see. Maybe it'll be cute. Y'all, look at this. It's going to make no sense. But, I mean, it gives you a chance to just play around with everything. Because you definitely want to just... You know, whenever you're doing somebody's nails, you want to know what's going to look right and what's not going to look right. So when you can just give yourself a chance to play around with everything, that's good. I'm playing with my nail supplies at this point. I'm literally playing with them. My rhinestones and all. So now, go back in here and... Go back in here and just start po putting them places. I feel like putting these rhinestones in there helps dress it up a bit. Because we all know that this one... We all know that the other little part look a little just normal. It's too normal. And we're basically just making a cluster. And really, you know, sometimes, with, a lot of times with nails, you just go with the flow and go with what you know. And then sometimes you go with what you don't know. And then maybe, I don't know, let's see. Yeah, it looks decent. I'm going to fill in. I'm gonna fill in these little small parts over here. Little small ones can go in that area. Let's see. If only y'all knew what I was looking and how I was looking. Over here, looking all crazy. I'm literally just doing something. Like, literally. And another thing when you're doing something like this, you do got to kind of be careful as well with how you um put the gems on here because 
too many jams in the cookers just can't make it harder for everything to cure so and i'm just gonna put a little bit here just to bring down the line and i'm going to be done and that is probably all the jewels we don't need for this because baby <laughs> this is what i miss i might look cute with somebody who knows y'all tell me what y'all think because in my opinion this looks i feel like it could be cute it's just a bit much okay then we're gonna go ahead on <laughs> fill in the sides y'all yeah, we just gonna leave it like that maybe put one over here right there in the middle I'm right here to close everything off. So I'm gonna put this one here and a little smaller one to close in on that. Maybe a little bit smaller. Let's try to find something to the semi stick so I can get done with this. And there we go. A big old cluster. And I'm gonna take this. <laughs> that looks so funny. We're gonna take that and cure it. And I'm gonna put the top coat on it, y'all. Because that one nail did it for every single. That one nail did it. <laughs> that one nail did it, honey. That's it. That's it. That's all. So I'm gonna take up. Uh -oh. I'm gonna take this nail and I'm gonna cure it. And maybe sooner or later I'll do some nail designs with this. That'll be cute. I should have took some of these out because I was beautiful. But anyways, anyways, this is the look, y'all. This is what we're looking at. Look at that design. So now. Even though this hand is a bit naked, like the design and everything is a bit naked, I do feel like it would have been really pretty with some rhinestones in here, but I'm really getting tired of the design, so I'm really going to just go ahead and top coat it and be done. So let's go ahead and give it the top coat that it's been waiting on, which is right here, to complete top loss. And to be honest, I really do think this nail is cute. Somebody might be looking, but y'all just know I was just playing with stuff, because I don't feel I barely use this. I might as well just use all my stuff for YouTube. I have a bunch of very amazing top coats from different brands, and I would suggest every one of them to you. Like, I'm going to have to do a video on that very soon. And that's that first one, y'all. Yeah. We're going in with this. Leave it on the sides. I did think that at first that this nail would actually look a bit more different but i guess not and, like, and no i would not suggest going over the rhinestones most of the time i would just do like i would just usually just do the top coat and then put the, apply the rhinestone and this one would have looked so much better with like some rhinestones on there or another design over this whole nail i would not suggest this but the way that i did it i did it so wrong so we're just gonna go over it i bet this is gonna make somebody cringe oh my gosh like <laughs> so this is a set y'all look at that that's cute we made a cute little set and look how cute i'm gonna do better next time this video is so long like, look at it. Look how gorgeous. Y'all can't tell me they're not cute, honey. Because they're cute. So let me go ahead and cure and get, get them situated. And then you guys can see the real results, okay? The real results, okay? And boom, there is the finished set, y'all. It is so cute. And I really, really like it. It's so pretty. And I think the only thing that I need now.